Hi, everybody. It's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Wednesday, February 15th, 2017. Happy Discount Valentine's Candy Day. I love the day after a big holiday because you can always go to the grocery store and get candy for about half off. But enough about that. Let's get on to the news. By the way, it's probably going to be a short show today. And let's start with updates with Pokemon Go getting the biggest update yet. At least 80 new Pokemon from the Gold and Silver era will be added, quote, later this week. I must have a Togepi and I must have one now. Ah! Let me know which is your favorite Pokemon from Gold and Silver in the comment section down below. The things I do for internets. Lucio has moved off of Overwatch's public test realm and into the main build. You can unlock him for 15,000 gold or $9.99 US or your regional equivalent. In other Blizzard news, balance changes are coming to two Hearthstone cards in the form of nerfs. Small Time Buccaneer will have his health reduced from 2 to 1, and Spirit Claws will have its mana cost increased from 1 to 2. A new game has been announced called Mother Gunship. It's a first person shooter mixed with a a bullet hell game and it's releasing late this year on December 29th for PC, Xbox One, and PS4. This is the police from developer THQ Nordic is no longer going to be a PC exclusive as it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One on March 22nd. Hey look, a trailer that's not for injustice. Nintendo has put out this rather basic trailer for Mario Sports Superstars. What the trailer lacks, the game looks like it will make up for as it features five different games, most from already successful Nintendo franchises. Let's see, we got your soccer, we got your baseball, we got your tennis, we got your golf, and we got your horse racing. I mean, that does sound like it could be fun. I have played a horse racing game before, but that was in an arcade on a big plastic horse thing. Oh no, better not give Nintendo any ideas, otherwise they'll release one that attaches to the Nintendo Switch. Anyway, Mario Sports Superstar releases on February 10th in Europe, March 24th in North America, and for some reason, Japan is getting it last on March 30th. Sony has demoed Gran Turismo Sport running on the PSVR. There is a trailer for it, but the whole thing is in Japanese. Uh, there's a link down below. Bethesda has now placed a limit on how many mods can be used for both Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition on console. Thankfully, the numbers are moderately high, with Xbox One gamers limited to 150 mods, and PS4 gamers are limited to 100. And really, if you want more modding capability than that, Perhaps you should move to PC. For Honor released on Tuesday, and as a surprise to no one, it is plagued with bugs and server stability issues. It is a new Ubisoft game after all. Players are being hit with matchmaking server errors, inability to launch the game, switching the assigned tasks of controller triggers, and my favorite of all, inability to quit the game. Oh no, it's dot hack all over again. Yeah, I got a little animu humor for you there. This does go deeper than the issues with the game itself, as some people who bought retail copies of For Honor's Deluxe and Gold Editions did not receive the additional content they paid for. It seems PS4 gamers are the most affected by this, though the article I'm referencing does say that Xbox One players are affected too, and I'm not sure about how affected PC gamers are. Ubisoft is completely aware of the issue and are working on figuring out what is causing it and then fixing it. In other Ubisoft game news, Watch Dogs 2 has had a slight addendum to its ending. Two NPCs talk, and it seems to point toward a location in London, and many are suspecting this is pointing towards DLC for Watch Dogs 2, or possibly the setting for Watch Dogs 3. Either way, I think a setting in modern day London would be a great idea, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Moving on to EA, who is offering a free one-week trial of their Origin Access subscription service on PC. Personally, I feel as though this isn't really that bad of a deal. It's only $5 a month, and you have access to around 40 games. They do keep adding more games to it, and you can cancel whenever you like. If you want to try it out for yourself, there's a link for that down below too. Microsoft has revealed when they will hold their conference at E3 this year, and it will be on sun Sunday. Sunday, June 11th. Sunday? Fuck! E3 2017 is taking place between June 13th and June 15th, but now people who have to cover it have to start on Sunday. Yeah, thanks a shit ton, Microsoft. You know what? I am gonna love seeing that new box of yours, which is already less powerful than my computer. Here's some bad news for those of you who use the PlayStation Now service. Sony will be discontinuing the program on their PS3, PS Vita, their Blu-ray players, and some Sony TVs. It goes into effect on April 1st for their TVs and August 15th for the rest of the devices. They claim this is to further develop and improve the resources for the experience on PC and PS4. And that brings us to our final time topic of the day, Blizzard is threatening legal action against people in Korea who are hacking Overwatch. Now just to be clear, this isn't against people who are using hacks because they aren't the source of the problem, this is about people who are writing and developing the hacks. They're also changing their policies for public gaming locations, but again, only in South Korea. Anyone who wants to play Overwatch in a public game cafe will now have to personally own a copy of the game, with this policy beginning two days from today. I'm rather divided on this issue because on one hand, I loathe hackers, but on the other hand, one of the 
reasons why you go to an internet cafe is so you don't have to own the games that they have. It also seems to be punishing those who've done nothing wrong by forcing everyone to buy the game if they wish to continue playing. Again, this is only for Korea, and it seems like it would be hard to enforce this elsewhere because Korean Battle.net accounts are tied to their social security number. But what would you think of a policy like this in a place where you live? Assuming, of course, it would be enforceable. Let me know in the comments down below. I've only got to enforce one policy, and that's to do tomorrow's game releases. You come up with a better segue. For PC, Emperor Kingdom, Herald, an interactive period drama, book one and two, Dimension Drive, Guts and Glory, Homebound, Hardnoid, Artiki Draft 3, Mall Empire, Bucket Detective, Elisa the Innkeeper, The Albatross, Real Politics, Never End, Sentinels, Putty Pals, The Hunter, Call of the Wild, Bachi Beach, The Ninth Day, and The Artist. For PlayStation 4, Starry Nights Helix, and for Nintendo 3DS, Tank Troopers. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And what do you feed a baby parabola? Quadratic formula. Wow, I nailed the game releases in one take. Holy cow. So I don't think I'm I, I don't think I'm very keen on that uh, Korean policy that Blizzard has by forcing everybody to buy the game if you want to keep playing. I don't I don't think I like that, even though it does seem to have some benefits, anti-hacking stuff. They say they're gonna do some VPN monitoring, which is uh, uh, monitoring that is, sorry. VPN monitoring. I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't know if that's in their capability or within their uh, rights because, you know, international laws and shit. I don't know. It, it, they know what they're doing better than I do. I just make videos on the internet. Speaking of which, social media links are over here. Uh, click over here for yes. No, subscribing. Subscribing over here. Bah. Subscribing over here. Yesterday's episode over here. Bye.